Our team traveled down to Indiana to get to know a couple named Brian and Sarah. The two have been married for 22 years and they have stuck by each other's side through it all. Their relationship was put to the test when Brian found out about Sarah's online friend named John. She has sent hundreds of thousands of dollars in hopes to meet this man in person. That seems like a pretty clear-cut case of infidelity. Why does this guy look so happy here? He's like spinning and kissing a girl who just cheated on him. I know this was supposed to be B-roll that was filmed for the show, but there is no amount of we need to get this so it can go in the episode that would get me to act like that after what she did. But maybe I'm missing something. Sarah claims her intentions were only to be friends. The two messaged each other and started an online relationship. Oh, right. Now I get it. They were friends. People send $250,000 to friends on the internet that they've never actually met all the time. I mean, that's a super common thing. I probably sent him money every week to two weeks for probably a good solid um, six to eight months. I cashed in my a couple life insurances and I cashed in um, my retirement fund um, and I sent him 100% of the money. Wow, what an idiot. What's even more shocking is that this kind of thing happens all the time. For all the people who love the Tinder swindler, this video comes from a channel called Catfished. Catfished is a channel that makes weekly videos on all the people who don't know how to do a reverse image search on Google and end up getting scanned by the 2023 version of a Nigerian prince. Basically, these people get baited into thinking that they're in a relationship by bots on websites like Instagram, and once the person is hooked or thinks they're in love, the scammer starts finding reasons to ask for money. Though I don't know how this is not obvious, all of these scammers do the same thing, which is put up a photo of someone who is attractive and give validation to someone who is way below their number. I saw her on Ukraine date. She always told me that I was handsome, distinguished. And she said that sounded interesting, and I thought she was interesting, and she was really pretty, you know? But to me, he's just a very attractive man. And it was nice to have somebody that looked like that think that I was pretty. Yeah, this guy who's like in his late 20s and goes to the gym is going to go out with a mouth-breathing obese woman in her 50s. How is this not an obvious red flag for a scam? I guess maybe that's how they get people hooked because they end up thinking, this is the only person who will find me attractive. Or some of these people are really just gullible like this woman who thought she was actually talking to Johnny Depp. And the next thing I know, I got this picture sent to me with me in the frame and he's holding the picture. And I'm like, what the heck? How do you do that? You know, I'm like, how did that happen that quick? My heart, this is Johnny Depp. This, this has got to be. I can imagine that the second the show host looked at this very obviously photoshopped picture, they started laughing their asses off. I've done graphic art myself. They actually featured three different women on this channel who thought they were in a relationship with Johnny Depp. Anyway, this is Sarah, our main topic of this video, who's been married to her pushover husband for 22 years. She has her gamer girl headset. She's quirky. My husband is very supportive with all my weird, crazy wackiness. I'm just quirky and weird. And for some reason, she has a husband who is completely okay with being cheated on. Do we let other people in our sex life? No. Would he be open to it if I did? If I wanted that? Probably, just because that's how he is. Um, would he do it? I don't think so. What a way to justify the horrible actions that you've done. But what I think this video with Sarah shows best is how people always pay the consequences of their dishonesty in some form or another, whether that's some elite constantly having to look over their shoulder because of all the people they've screwed over, or it's some chick who hid a relationship from her husband and ended up liquidating her life savings so she could give it to a scam artist. Bad behaviors will eventually bring negative consequences into your life, especially if you repeat them a lot, which is why it's nice to have checks and balances against your bad habits, a primary one being the opinion of the person that you're in a relationship with. Speaking of smelling great, have you heard about Reed Street Soap? Reed Street Soap is a company that strives to make you smell good with the best possible ingredients. For the fall season, there are all kinds of new products like the Pumpkin Spice Soap or the Lumina Soap. You can also try classic favorites like the Day at the Beach Soap or the Arctic Wave Soap. Not only that, but Reed Street Soap sells candles as well. There's a pecan pie candle and a coffee mug candle. Check out Reed Street Soap by clicking on the first link in the description. 
and use the promo code SPOOKY to get one free soap when you buy two candles. Anyway, obviously Sarah has no respect for the man that she's married to, as she straight up lied to him from the beginning. Brian supported all of Sarah's hobbies and interests. He even agreed it was okay for Sarah to have friendships with strangers over the internet. I talk to people online. Um, It's not a new thing. I don't think it is wrong for somebody to have relationships of both sexes. Yeah, sure. You can have friends on the internet. What's the big deal with that? Except it was very obvious based on the messages that they were showing in the video that this scammer was saying stuff that was clearly trying to push Sarah into a relationship. The amount of gaslighting from Sarah in this episode is insane. They never video chatted and Sarah is still claiming she was never in love with John. I guess you could be romantically interested in someone yet not be in love, but you would have to be a complete idiot to read messages that say I love you and say, gee, I have no idea what's going on here. I don't feel that way. He's just a friend. Whether Sarah is oblivious or not, she is certainly quick to say that her secret relationship partner is attractive. Obviously, he was um, easy on the eyes, blue eyes, brown hair. He looks like he probably works out um, quite a bit. Um, Nice, like, six-pack. But to me, he's just a very attractive man. He's in shape, he looks masculine, and he's a man in uniform. She was so into this friend that she was willing to drive eight hours just to see him. Now he's in the United States, and I, I said... You're close enough, like you're eight hours away from me. Why don't I take a road trip? I can take a road trip. I can take some time. I have time off. We can meet somewhere. I want I want him to follow through with what he has promised me, which is one, coming to meet me. Um, because I would I in the beginning I did want to meet him. I thought it would be nice. I thought it would be cool. Um, and my husband was okay with it at that time. Why is she so insistent on meeting this friend? And why did she have to mention the caveat of, my husband was okay with it at that time? Well, we know why. This guy is like the polar opposite of her husband who is out of shape, has bad posture, doesn't act like a man, and lets his wife walk all over him when she feigns ignorance. Understand that when I say this next thing, I still think his wife is a terrible person, but something I say to myself a lot is that it takes two bad drivers to make a car accident. One bad driver to screw up and initiate the accident, and a second bad driver to not avoid it. Obviously, this doesn't apply to every situation, but if you've been driving long enough, I can imagine that you've done some stupid thing on the road that some hero driver prevented from turning into an accident by getting out of the way. That certainly happened to me before, and it's actually a service I provide pretty regularly since I moved to Texas. Texas drivers tailgate like crazy, and I've almost been hit by these people many times at this point. Anyway, oftentimes it takes two bad drivers to create a car accident, And oftentimes, when bad things happen in a relationship, it's because both parties aren't doing what they know they should be doing. Which makes me wonder, if Sarah's husband Brian was in shape and acted more masculine, would she feel the need to go outside the relationship to get what she wants? I'm not saying what she did wasn't extremely messed up, but sometimes I like to be very pragmatic about things and create solutions based on what the desirable outcome is, as opposed to trying to expect everyone to be perfectly moral. So if Brian had the body type and the masculinity that she was attracted to, then this probably wouldn't have happened. Certainly, Sarah would be a lot less sure that she could get away with it so easily. Or at the very least, Brian could have attracted a better chick who wouldn't lie to him like Sarah does. I have nothing to hide. She has nothing to hide? Such an interesting thing to say because she seems to have a lot to hide. Once um, things progressed and um, John wanted money, I did not originally tell my husband. I kept it um, a secret. Would you be shocked if I told you that her husband didn't know anything about this eight-month relationship until basically she contacted the people at Catfish to see if the guy she's talking to is real? So up until this point, you you still don't know the full story or the details? Yeah, I, I don't know anything about John. I didn't even know his name until the other day. When she continued to talk to him, like, how did that make you feel? Honestly, I didn't know about that until today. Well, he seems to be really happy about that. She's out here liquidating her life savings to help a guy with the dumbest, most obviously fake story ever, and she didn't think it was pertinent to tell her husband that she was cashing out her retirement. This is what I mean when I say people get punished for their dishonesty. Yeah, she kind of got away with the cheating, but in the process, 
She burned all of her money and accrued a massive amount of debt. If she actually respected her husband and was the kind of person who wouldn't try to have a secret relationship, this would have never happened. Or if she was just honest and told her husband what was up, he could have said, uh, this story from your Instagram guy is obviously fake. The scammer made the claim that he was shot and injured in Syria, a place that America is not even at war with. This relationship was in like 2021, and at that point, America had very little involvement in that country, so the odds of him being an injured soldier there are very low. But he said he needed money to fly out of Syria and to get medical care. First of all, I'm not a military expert, but I am pretty sure that if you're on deployment and you just leave, that's a crime. Second, if you're injured and need to get sent home, the government pays for that. Did she even think to Google this stuff? I mean, she has the Gamer Girl headset, right? She must know how to Google. Even my 90-year-old grandmother knows how to Google. Though if she was just honest with her husband about what she was doing, she never would have fallen for this scam. Abusers always try to isolate their victims from other people because that makes the victims more vulnerable. Having people around you prevents these kinds of situations from happening. Moving on, we find out that the woman who has nothing to hide also did not tell her husband how much money she gave to this complete stranger. The only thing she really told me is that she was scammed out of about $60,000 and it was all investments that she lost. There may have been losses more than 60000 Okay. I'm just being honest with you. Right. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Wow. For a second there, it looked like Brian was almost brave enough to show his actual feelings about this. Though right after that, he goes on to say that he's going to support his wife because she's in a really bad place. Brian, this chick is not just in a bad place. She's a liability. She spent her life savings just for the chance to have sex with a guy that she's never met or even had a video chat with. She has no idea if this person is real, yet she gave him $250,000 and did no real investigation as to where that money was going. Even worse, she wasn't suspicious when the guy asked to be given the money in gift cards so he could make it harder to trace and change it to Bitcoin. She would buy gift cards and send the codes to John on the back of the cards. John would receive the code and sell the gift cards on websites like Paxful. All you need to do is have the code that was on the back of that gift card and the website will buy your gift card for around 80 cents on the dollar. So not only was she not suspicious here of this really roundabout way to send someone money, but she also was just flat out giving away 20% of her wealth to send it as a gift card. This chick is horrible with money, though the gift card thing isn't even the worst of it. Check this out. He has my social security, he has my driver's license, he has my full name, he knows who my parents' names are, he knows my sister's name. He could destroy me, for sure. How in the hell did this guy get her social security number? Did she fall for the silly Fortnite name meme? Forget the cheating, this lady again is a massive liability who is sharing all of her personal information to a complete stranger on the internet. She's putting her husband in danger by doing this, and she does not care. Look what she said. I have nothing to hide. I don't feel like I did, I necessarily did anything wrong. I think most of the blame lays on this particular person because he was deceitful. What do you mean you didn't do anything wrong? You gave your social security number, your driver's license number, and your full name to a complete stranger. Do you have any idea how much criminal stuff a person can do with that kind of info? Wow, that is someone who is definitely not going to learn their lesson from this. This is the same level of thinking that woke feminists have when they say, women shouldn't have to do anything to protect themselves. We should be able to walk down dark alleyways by ourselves at 3 a.m. We should be able to get blackout drunk at a party full of random strangers we don't know. And men should just learn how to not assault women. Yeah, except there's always going to be bad people out there, and telling them that what they're doing is wrong is not going to stop them. Everyone has the responsibility to learn how to protect themselves, and Sarah's saying that she didn't do anything wrong after she gave her life savings and her social security number to a person she's never met without the slightest bit of skepticism is like me complaining that my car got stolen after I left it in a bad neighborhood with the windows down and the keys in the ignition, followed by me saying, I didn't do anything wrong. You should just teach robbers not to rob. So now to make the money back, Sarah has started doing sex work. The couple are doing everything they can to get back on their feet. Sarah opened up an account on Feet Finder and has resorted to selling images of her feet to people online to make ends meet. I would try to hustle like 
by selling feet pictures and that kind of weird stuff as well. It's not like I'm rolling in dough or anything like that. I'm trying to make a living and you can sell feet pictures, but, um, and stuff like that. I only sold a couple of those. Um, and then, um, a couple people, um, bought me pedicures. They blurred her feet. That's funny. That kind of reveals the type of content it is. What's crazy though, is just how much this show is simping for Sarah. Here are the creators of it talking to her husband one-on-one. Sounds like, you know, you're incredibly supportive, which is, I mean, how you keep a marriage going, right? What? You think getting cheated on, having a massive portion of your household wealth liquidated, and not standing up for yourself is being incredibly supportive? That's called being a pushover or an enabler. The guy who just said that is the CEO of the company that makes this show, and he's married, yet he totally is okay with Sarah cheating. He's just as bad as her on this, as Sarah, a little bit before this scene, fully admits to having feelings for the guy that she was keeping secret from her husband. Did I care about him? Yes. Um, Was I hoping to meet him in person? Yes. Did I have feelings for him that I probably shouldn't have? Yes. Um, Do I still have them? No. I don't think so. She didn't really seem that sure about that last part. I thought he was just a friend. What were these feelings that you shouldn't have had? So after she says that, the show host actively encouraged her husband Brian to support her. However, just a year prior, the same guy who called Brian supportive for staying with his cheating wife chastised a different guy for wanting to replace his wife with a porn star. This this girl supposedly coming to see me end of this month. I, I hear two stories from you though. Like I'm, I'm super confused. I mean, you tell me in, in one, one ear, you're telling me that if Tammy was, you know, easier going, you'd work it out. And then the next year you're telling me that, you know, you're going to meet this person. Not, not have a, a, a B plan to fall back onto in case the first one doesn't work. You know, it's my recommendation just man to man is I, I would definitely be candid and honest because it seems like she has a different perception of, you know, your feelings toward her and, mm-hmm. and um, you know, maybe not treat her as a backup because it's a little disrespectful. I wonder why his opinion changed so vastly in a little over a year. He's actually had this take multiple times on the show when a guy did the same disgusting thing that Sarah did, though his follow-up with this particular cheater here was kind of funny. And to reiterate, they can be anywhere in the world, but we right. tend to see, like, the romance side of things, they tend to be, you know, 19 to 25 year old males out of Lagos, Nigeria, unfortunately. You are probably talking to a guy. All right, that's fine, thank you. I thought that was a great little reveal to all the cheaters that are on this show. At least a lot of these people getting scammed are degenerates and not innocent. But it's crazy how they made that guy look like crap on the show and then portrayed him as kind of gay for talking to a man. Yet in this situation with Sarah, The show tells Brian multiple times to give his cheating wife full support, even after she said this. Is there anything that you want to say to Brian? No, just that I love him and that I am super glad that he's willing to stand by me through um, the worst thing that I've ever done and that I will probably, hopefully, ever do and that he's here to help me through it. Is there anything you want to say to Brian? No. She starts out with no, not I'm sorry I made a huge mistake, not I'm going to do everything I can to earn your trust back. She says no, and then she thanks Brian for cleaning up the mess that she made while she was cheating on him. He, he's my soulmate. He's my better half um, and everything, so I can't imagine my life without him. Um, so that's where I'm at. I'm pretty sure people don't find their soulmate and then go look elsewhere for other guys to go sleep with. I mean, holy crap, this woman is a terrible person, and she's hiding behind feigning ignorance and playing the victim card. She is super manipulative, and probably an addict. Sending a guy you don't know 250 k is addict behavior. Yet at the end of the video, Brian still chooses to stay with her. This whole situation, where does this leave you and your marriage with your husband? Um, we've talked, um, obviously, about all of this, and right now, Brian is pretty cool about everything he's still in it for the long haul just like i am so absolutely ridiculous at least the girl from the other episode had the courage to leave her cheating husband but brian is out here just going with it even though you can clearly see he's not happy about this 
and is using high levels of cope in order to hold on to a relationship that is full of dysfunction. Personally, for this situation, I'm more on the Jordan Peterson slash psychologist way of thinking, which is that everyone inherently knows what they're supposed to be doing. Sarah knew what she was doing was wrong, which is why she hid it from her husband and continued to hide the extent of the damage by telling him she only lost 60k when it was actually more like four times that. Brian also knows what the correct thing to do is, and you can tell by his size and his lack of eye contact when his wife is speaking. He knows the correct decision is to end the relationship with his cheating wife, and he's going to continue to suffer the consequences until he stands up for himself and stops enabling her bad behavior. You don't think she's going to pull crap like this again? She hid two massive problems, which were the amount of money she gave to a random stranger, and that she gave that same random stranger the ability to steal her identity. Information that this scammer totally didn't sell to other scammers, by the way. She would absolutely do something like this again, and you have evidence from her that she will keep it secret until the problem is so big that it's too late to do anything. It's just money. I, I don't care if it's $50,000, $100,000, $200,000. I don't care. It's just money. Just money? She spent $250,000 behind his back. They live in Indiana, and that's what the average house costs in that state. The scammer also has all of her personal information. He could use that to take out a massive loan in her name and possibly use your house as collateral. If her name's on the title, the scammer could probably just flat out steal the house. Would it be just money if it ended up costing you your home? This guy is severely downplaying what his wife did. It's not just money. It's the lying, the cheating, and the fact that she didn't consult her husband before making major decisions that affect him. That being said, you can save yourself a lot of trouble just by behaving how you know you should behave. It's shocking how simple this all is, because there are many people out there looking for the cheat codes or the shortcuts to life, which makes them vulnerable to scammers, con artists, and cult leaders, but the actual answer is just do what you know you should be doing. You'd be surprised at how easy things get and how much more difficult it is for people to mess with you when you start doing that. Anyway, thanks for watching, follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you in the next video.